What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. A while ago, I made a tweet saying that I was working on my top 50 hip hop projects of all time, which I was later going to turn into a YouTube video. And today I finally finished that list. So I'm going to be going over all 50 of them today in this video. This is one of my most requested video ideas ever. There's always people in my Twitch chat asking me, what are my top 10 hip hop albums? What are my top 20 hip hop albums? Stuff like that. So I thought I'd make a video and just give my top 50 list. Two things before we get started. First of all, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know this, but I'm a strong believer in the fact that music is subjective. Your top 50 list could look completely different than mine, and that's okay. That is the point of opinions. Secondly, this list is not set in stone. I literally changed two positions of albums like less than 10 minutes ago. So yeah, I'll probably disagree with a couple things on this list in a couple months, but that's just how opinions work. Just like if I were to redo my top 15 hip hop acts now, I would put Chief Key like two or three spots higher but yeah make sure you go ahead and like the video if you like this type of content to let me know to make more of this stuff and consider subscribing if you are new for this list i decided to make one honorable mention just because it was so close to making the top 50 but that album is man on the moon 2 by kid cuddy this is cuddy's best solo project with one of the best hip-hop songs of all time ghost but i just couldn't see it above number 50 but coming in at number 50 the very bottom spot we got rodeo by travis scott this was travis's debut album and kickstarted the career of one of the best trap artists in modern music. At number 49, 700 Degrees by Black Cray. Unique vocals, great production, and actually talks about some real issues if you listen to the lyrics. Number 48, Red Light by Blade. A lot of you might know this because it got a one from Fantano, but in my opinion, it's actually a great project and has Obedient, which is one of the best trap songs ever. At number 47, we got the Ghost Pop Tape by Devon Hendricks. This is one of the most depressing and unique projects I've ever listened to, and knowing the backstory of how it was actually made just makes it even more sad. At number 46, Cemetery and Ghost Mountains, 100 Acre Wrist. This is where I might start to lose people. I know Cemetery isn't the most accessible artist, and probably a very small percentage of the viewers watching this actually agree with this pick. But in the end, I'm not going to just change my opinions because I think people would disagree with me. Ghost Mountain has some of the best vocals I've ever heard, and him and Cemetery just go so well together as a duo, and I wish they were still on good terms so we'd hear more music like this. At number 45, Illmatic by Nas. This is a great album that perfectly captures that old old New York sound, and Nas's rapping is pretty impressive as well. Unfortunately, this album gets extremely overrated by some people, so I'm gonna get a lot of hate for putting it this low, but it's whatever. At number 44, I got AT Aliens by the best hip-hop duo of all time, Outkast. So yes, this means that Illmatic isn't the best 90s hip-hop album, and there's actually quite a few more higher on this list. I apologize. At number 43, All My Heroes Are Cornballs by JPEG Mafia. I've talked about this project a couple times on here already. It has great vocals, unique production, and and melodies that get stuck in my head for the rest of the day. At number 42, we got another Peggy project. This might be kind of controversial that it's above both All My Heroes Are Cornballs and the Ghost Pop tape, but Communist Slow Jams is taking this spot. Great mixtape with some of Peggy's most powerful and meaningful lyrics. At number 41, Cemetery and Ghost Mountain, Gravehouse. Some people prefer 100 Acre Wrist as the better Ghost and Sem collab, but personally, I think Ghost Mountain's vocals are a lot better here, and the style changes a lot more throughout the album, so it just makes it a lot more interesting. At number 40, Mmm Food by MF Doom. Only Doom can make an hour-long project rapping about food actually sound interesting. Great production, great rhyme schemes, and just another great project out of Doom's consistent discography. This is the last Cemetery album on the list, I promise, but at number 39, I got Rainbow Bridge 3 by Cemetery. This is probably the least accessible album on this whole top 50 list, so I'm not even gonna try to explain why I like it. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, that's fine. It's not for everyone. At number 38, DS2 by Future. An hour-long trap project with only one feature that still manages to stay interesting the whole way through is something only Future could do. Okay, Cardi could probably do that too, but it's impressive nonetheless. At at number 37, I got Reasonable Doubt by Jay-Z. Another great 90s album, this is Jay-Z's best work and has some great features. At number 36, Pinata by Freddie Gibbs. Madlib is a master at what he does and this project is no exception. Every single beat is so catchy and Freddie Gibbs does a great job rapping over them with some of the best flows I've ever heard. At number 35, wow, we are going through this list fast. Um, At Long Last ASAP by ASAP Rocky. I don't really know what to say for this one, the production is great, Rocky sounds great, and it has one of Kanye's 
best features ever. Honestly, it might be his best feature. At number 34, The Gospel According To by Makami. When this album first came out, Makami only sold a few copies of the vinyl for an insane price and didn't put it on any streaming platforms. But eventually, some people that owned the vinyl leaked it, so now it's out there. If you're able to find it, definitely give it a listen. It's great. At number 33, Jeffrey by Young Thug. This album did grow off of me a little bit over time, but I still think it's one of the best vocal performances in all of hip hop. Songs like Riri and Harambe just show how good of a vocalist Young Thug is, and I think this is his best project. At number 32, Working on Dying by Blade. This album grew on me a lot in the past couple months. I love Filthy's production, Blade sounds great, and the features are amazing as well. At number 31, Pizza and Codeine by Chris Travis. Whenever someone asks me for good album recommendations on how to get into cloud rap, this is always one of the first ones I mention. Pretty accessible, pretty good, and all around just a good listen. Pizza and Codeine is also my highest 8 in all of hip hop, so everything from here on out is a low 9 or higher. Starting it off with my lowest 9 in all of hip hop, at number 30 I got Faces by Mac Miller. This is Mac's best project, one of the best mixtapes ever, and it just came to streaming services, so now is the perfect time to go and listen to it. At number 29, Solace by Earl Sweatshirt. Pain. At number 28, Die Lit by Playboy Cardi. After hitting mainstream with his self-titled mixtape, Cardi drops his debut studio album, expanding upon the ideas presented in his previous project, as well as implementing new elements such as the baby voice. This album will forever be remembered as one of the turning points for trap music, creating a whole new subgenre and tons of artists trying to recreate this sound only three years later. At number 27, Liquid Swords by Jizza. This is the greatest boom bap album of all time, with simple yet catchy beats from RZA, as well as great energy from Jizza and all the features. At number 26, Kid See Ghost by Kid See Ghost. Another great album that solidifies 2018 as one of the best years for hip hop. Kanye and Cudi complement each other so well, and I really hope we see more stuff like this in the future. At number 25, Live Love ASAP by ASAP Rocky. This is Rocky's best work, pretty much perfecting the cloud rap sound. Rocky's voice and flow just fits so perfectly with the chill, laid back production from Clams Casino, and literally every song just makes me levitate. Also, if you listen to the version on streaming services and really like it, I would highly recommend recommend downloading the original version because on the streaming service version they took out some of the best songs and features. You can download it from pretty much any mixtape website. Personally, I like Mixtape Monkey, but I'm sure they have it on like Dat Piff and stuff too. At number 24, Thoughtbreaker by Chief Keef. A mix of pop, trap, R&B, maybe drill, I don't know. This is a genre of its own and it sounds amazing. At number 23, I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside by Earl Sweatshirt. It's so impressive to me how every song on this album can convey a certain mood or feel so well. Since the production on each song fits what Earl is rapping about so well, an atmosphere is created and the listener gets a deeper understanding about what Earl is actually going through. I think the intro, Huey, is the best example of this, with the beat sounding like a depressing carnival, completely matching the lyrics of the song. At number 22, The Life of Pablo by Kanye West. I don't have much to say for this album, just a bunch of great songs that explain the emotions that Kanye was going through at the time of release. Number 21, Bottomless Pit by Death Grips. This took all of Death Grips elements from the money store, put a new spin on it, and it sounds amazing. At number 20, Ever Since by Blade. White Armor's production paired with Blade's vocals make this album an emotional masterpiece that gets better with every listen. Blade talks about his struggles with substance abuse, relationships, and other topics, and it is a great debut album for one of the best rappers of all time. At number 19, the mixtape that came right before Ever Since, Glue. These projects are extremely close in quality, I just think the highs of Glue, like Unreal and Delete, just slightly set it over ever since. Although the production doesn't sound as polished as other Blade projects, I think that kind of adds to the charm of it, and I honestly think it sounds great. Number 18, Almighty So by Chief Keef. I know I've promised an explanation video for the concept of this album many times, and I apologize, I will get to it eventually, uh, but yeah, this album just sounds great. Number 17, Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Brown. This album follows the downward spiral of someone addicted to alcohol and drugs and explains the emotions they go through. Great album and has one of the best songs ever, Ain't It Funny. Also, the music video for this song is literally the best music video I've ever seen. At number 16, Monster by Future. I feel like I've talked about this project at least three times on this channel now, but for good reason, I guess. This is Future's most raw and vulnerable project, going over his issues with addiction and relationships 
relationship problems with Ciara. At number 15, Steroids by Death Grips. I'm starting to realize why I've talked about a lot of these projects already. It's because I did the best hip hop album of every year of the 2010s and most of those are on this list. But yeah, Steroids is a great EP, some of Death Grips best and most unique production. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what any of it means. I haven't looked into the concept or anything. It's just on here because it sounds great. At number 14, we got another Death Grips project, Ex Military. If you're a big fan of MC Ride's vocals and want a project centered around them, this is the project for you. The raw production sits in the back and allows Ride's vocals to be the focal point of this project and it just sounds great. At number 13, Veteran by JPEG Mafia. This album feels so messy and all over the place, but the more I listen to it, the more it just makes sense. On my first couple listens, I really liked a couple tracks, but then the rest of it just sounded like filler that was trying too hard to be experimental. But as I listened to the album more, those filler tracks turned into songs I would actually go back to regularly and I started to understand why they were put in the album. It's still messy, but in a good way, if that makes sense. Number 12, Yeezus by Kanye West. This was Kanye's first venture into industrial hip hop and somehow he was able to nail it first try. Super creative beats, great one-liners from Kanye as always, and a heavenly guitar solo from Mike Dean himself. Number 11, Aquemini by Outkast. Outkast is undoubtedly the best hip hop duo of all time and this is definitely their best work. The title of this album is a combination of Aquarius and Gemini, which is Andre 3000 and Big Boy Star Signs, and the project covers topics like drug addiction, relationships, prostitution, and other things. Every song is extremely memorable, with so much energy coming from both members, and the artist storytelling part 1 and 2 are some of the best songs I've ever heard. At the 10th greatest hip hop album of all time, I got LP by JPEG Mafia. Yes, I'm aware this only came out like a month ago. It's just that good. Every song is so different, but it still sounds like one album, and all the songs just fit together so nicely. It sounds like a celebration of all of JPEG Mafia's accomplishments over the years, taking elements from all his previous projects, improving on them, and mixing them into one. If me talking about this album convinced you to go listen to it, I would highly recommend listening to the offline version. The version that you're gonna find on streaming services has a couple less songs and not all the samples are there, but the offline version, which is available to download for free on his Bandcamp, is how the album was intended to be, with all the extra songs and uncleared samples. At number 9, I got My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye West. Do I even need to explain why this is here? Kanye took pretty much every major hip hop artist at the time and flew them all to Hawaii to work on this project. It worked out very well and the result is a beautiful album with no skips from front to back. You could make an argument for pretty much any of the features here being the best on the album, but they're all just so consistently good. My top three are Nicki on Monster, Rick Ross on Devil in a New Dress, and Pusha T on Runaway, but even then I'm leaving so many good ones out. Features aside, the production is amazing, Kanye's rapping is great with some of his deepest songs, and I'd highly recommend checking out the Dissect podcast season on this album. They go through all the songs, breaking down the lyrics, the samples, everything, and it honestly made me grow a new appreciation for this album. At number 8, Mad Villainy by Mad Villain. I talked about Mad Lib's production earlier when we went over Pinata, but I just gotta reiterate how good this guy is. Every single beat is unique and adds something new, and makes MF Doom's complex rhyme schemes and lyrical skills seem even more impressive. Rest in peace to MF Doom, he will forever be remembered as the villain of hip-hop. Number 7, The Money Store by Death Grips. Everything in the top 10 has been fairly accessible so far, but this is where some people might start to disagree. I absolutely love the production here, with some of the most creative samples I've ever heard, like the Vancouver Skytrain and Tennis Players Grunting. I don't think any band other than Death Grips would be able to make that sound good. On my first couple listens of this album, I was thinking to myself, why does this sound good, this shouldn't sound good? But as I listen to it more, I've just come to accept that this is a musical masterpiece and one of the greatest projects ever created. Number 6, a lot of people are gonna be mad at me in the comments for how high this is placed, and honestly this might be the most disagreed thing on the whole list, but for the 6th best hip hop album of all time, I got Whole Letter Red by Playboy Cardi. I don't know what to say, the production is some of the best I've ever heard, Cardi's vocals are insane, the features are great, and the lyrics are surprisingly good if you actually look into them. If you're new to my channel and you think objectivity still exists in music and you're about to comment, so you think Whole Letter Red is better than Dark Twisted Fantasy, that's just objectively wrong. Please just shut up, you can comment it, sure, but the only reason it's higher is because I enjoy it more. Personally, I enjoy this album more than number 7 
and everything below it so i don't see a reason of why i would put it lower just to appeal to more people it's fine to disagree with this a lot of people are going to but i genuinely think this will be one of the most influential albums going forward not only for trap music but for hip-hop as a whole at number five good kid mad city by kendrick lamar this is the best storytelling album of all time and every time i listen to it i find something new in kendrick's lyricism if you want to know the story of this album click up here i made a video explanation going over the whole concept but even without the story each song individually sounds amazing and even the bonus tracks are great at number four this is the list's first 10 out of 10 album making good kid mad city my highest nine in all of hip-hop we got The Calls Dropout by Kanye West. To me, The Calls Dropout is the definition of the perfect hip-hop album. Great innovative production, starting the whole wave of using pitched up soul samples in hip-hop. Good lyricism with a theme criticizing the American education system. Some of Kanye's funniest skits and great one-liners. This is Kanye's best album and one of the best albums ever. At number three, another 10, Some Rap Songs by Earl Sweatshirt. I've already talked about this album a couple times on the channel, but this is another example of a perfect album. While it does take a little bit of getting used to, getting this album to click and understanding what Earl was trying to do with this project is so worth it. I've never heard an album anything like this. The closest thing I can think of is probably Feet of Clay, but even then they sound very different. Very unique jazz rap production, deep lyrics, and a depressing theme. Great album. At number two, which I could honestly see as being number one, I got The Powers That Be by Death Grips. I still have to make a video explaining the concept of this, just like I have to do for Almighty So, but even without knowing the concept, this album is just so enjoyable. I prefer the second half, Jenny Death, over the first half just because I'm a big fan of hard rock, but both are amazing projects. Zach Hill's drumming is insane, especially on songs like On GP, Centuries of Damn, Why a Bitch Got a Lie, and the production on songs like Up My Sleeve, Say Hey Kid, and Voila is unlike anything I've ever heard before. And number one, the best hip hop album of all time has to go to To Pimp a Butterfly. I know this is a very predictable pick, and a lot of people put it as their number one hip hop album just because it's a safe choice, but I genuinely believe this is the greatest album ever made. The lyricism is deep. You could go to any song on this album and just analyze the lyrics on Genius for hours. The production is perfect. This is another example of jazz elements being incorporated into hip hop beats and Kendrick's vocals are great as always. Anyways, that's it. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts. So let me know in the comments. If you like this video, consider hitting that like button. And if you're new, maybe subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And I will see you all next week for another video. Video. Peace.